welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today, we are going to be making a sauerkraut for the first time from my very own cabbages that I grew in my garden. I'm so excited. If you are interested, I did actually, aphids, I did actually make a vlog, well, like gardening kind of like, video that was surrounding when I actually picked these ones that was posted a while back. So I will go ahead and link to that one if you guys are interested in actual harvesting of these cabbages. I think I have 10 heads here. So for now, we are going to soak all of these in the sink over there to get the aphids and the bugs to kind of float to the top. And then we're going to go from there and we're going to make our sauerkraut. So let's get on this. I think I'm supposed to mix some salt into the sink, so we're gonna do that. I don't know how much to actually mix in, so I'm gonna guess. With these cabbages, I'm gonna set aside the outer leaves. They're gonna be made into my stir fry for dinner tonight. <laughs> so, but they still need to get the aphids off of them. You can see they got the aphids on there. Come on, come on, focus, focus. Maybe it focused. I don't know if you can see the aphids, but there's plenty of them on there. So we're gonna do this. What I recall, these things are supposed to sit in the sink for like 10 minutes, I think. I'm gonna cook myself some dinner and then we'll meet back here when we're ready for the next step. Aphids are so gross. It's been probably like 20 minutes, and pretty much anything that wasn't already floating, like right in the beginning, didn't come up to the top and float. Like, there's not a bunch of aphids on there uh, the floating around none of that so unless i didn't add enough salt to it which i mean i had to get a lot of salt to it i think this one's just stupid <laughs> we're gonna have to go ahead and uh, take these kind of one by one and brush off as much of the aphids as i can brush off so we're just gonna go ahead and get cracking on getting some salt massaged into these things so that we can get it to ferment to start fermenting the one thing about doing it with the soaking these things in the sink, there is a ridiculous amount of water that stays behind inside these things. Like I got what I thought was all the water out of them. I set them on the counter and like, it just had like a flood all over from stuff that was still coming out of there. So yeah, basically all I'm going to do with this, I'm going to make a super basic salt and sauerkraut ferment. So this is going to be, you know, it's mostly just a making, uh, a large batch of sauerkraut to preserve my harvest of cabbage but it's also i'll show you kind of how i'm doing it. i have made i think two different sauerkraut videos and i will go ahead and link those ones down below and or up here in the corner but those ones might be a little bit more detailed but i'm just really excited and i want to show you that you don't have to can everything like you can you can preserve your harvest just fine with fermentation, at least on some level. Mmm. Find all kinds of stuff inside cabbages when you grow it yourself, huh? I think we got, I think we got the bulk of that. Okay. So you, you can do this a lot of different ways. The way that I like to do it is just simple. I like to cut it up with a knife. I'm, I'm, you can get a, your food processor if you wish. That is not something to do. So that's not something we're gonna do. All right, so this is the one that we harvested. This is the main reason that I actually ended up harvesting these today was because this guy here split open. So let's see what's in the inside, shall we? We had a bunch, oh yeah. See, it split because the core had popped up and it was just getting ready to go to seed. So, we've got a big giant core inside this thing. I've never seen one with that big of a core. But look at the denseness of this. I'm proud of 
that I grew that. Like, I'm so excited. It's so dense. I love it. All we're gonna do is just, I cut it in quarters so that I can cut the core out. Not so that I can eliminate the core, but uh, sometimes I like to eliminate the core and sometimes I include it. I'm gonna include it today. The main reason that I'm cutting it like this is so that I can chop up the core much more finely. That's the reason that I like to do it. And over the years of fermentation, I have, I change what I like with sauerkraut. Sauerkraut is my favorite, 100% by far, bar none, no questions asked. Sauerkraut is my go-to favorite ferment and I'm super bummed that I just used the last of my sauerkraut. So I'm gonna be really excited when this stuff is ready to go. So I will likely end up um, doing a shorter term ferment on one or two of these just so that I can get some sauerkraut going, but the rest of it I'm sure that I will leave to ferment. With making the sauerkraut, I want to make sure that you want to make sure that you're using a, there's a big old spiders. So we are going to go ahead and I'm going to weigh it so that I can add the correct amount of salt to it. You want to do, I mean, you can do it every one for the most part, within reason, but I like to do 2%. And since this is kind of a tutorial type thing, I'm weighing these in grams. And then, so I'm gonna, this right here is 176 grams. If I wanted to do a 2% solution on this, I would add basically four grams of salt. It's kind of rounded up on such a small amount. So I guess it's the small amount's not that good of a representation. <laughs> There's still like a really, really small number of aphids on here. I'm not gonna worry about it a whole lot. Like you can if you want to, um, but I'm not gonna go through and pick off every last little teeny bug. Like I'm not that worried about it. But if there's any kind of like big worms or you know nasty, funky stuff, I would pick it out. But aphids, they're kind of hard to get out. I think I failed to finish the thought earlier. But when I was saying that sauerkraut is my absolute favorite and I've kind of changed over the years, the main thing that I've changed with the sauerkraut is I used to like it very thick leaves and currently I like them, you know, just kind of your average, maybe a little bit bigger than average like stuff you find in the store, but not, not, not much bigger at all. Um, you can see like in the inside, like there's some dead pieces, like some, just some parts of the leaves that died. Um, use them or not, I don't think it matters. I'm just so pleased with how well these cabbages turned out. I'm proud of myself. This is my first time actually getting cabbage in the ground. Like I've never, like I've started it in the past, but this is the first time I've gotten in the ground and to have so such success with it, like I just, I'm super, super thankful. So I think what I'm gonna end up doing with this, I'm gonna get another bowl that is smaller and I can do this kind of head by head and just transfer it into these once I have them kind of mushed up. I know a lot of people, like they just beat their stuff to death. They literally just pound it for like 10 minutes to draw out the liquid. I don't find it necessary at all. Uh, all I do with it is I like to like massage it in for a couple of minutes tops and then I just let it let it set I put a tea towel over it to, uh, to make sure no bugs get in there um, you know I got plenty of bugs already and then I just let it set for probably at least an hour and then pack it into jars that's you know the lazy way probably but I find that it just I don't want to sit here and beat sauerkraut for a lot ever. I mean, if you want to do it, go for it, but it's not what I do. I have plenty of other things to do with my time. Okay, so we're almost a thousand. There we go, we hit a thousand grams. Okay, so we are at 11.13. What is that? I mean, that's 22 grams of salt. So we're call it like 23 grams of salt. And then, so we're just gonna put 23 grams of salt on here. And yeah, we'll go ahead and measure. Even though a lot of different salts have a different weight, but we'll still let you know how many. I 
glass, right? That's a one tablespoon. <laughs> um, I it doesn't seem right, right? I'm gonna do a little bit extra. So we're gonna do a 3%, how about that? We'll go with 33. There we go, okay. So next step, what I do is I kind of just mush it a bit and kind of stir it up. And the point of kind of mushing it while you're stirring it is to kind of push the salt into, the, or squeeze the salt, whatever you wanna call it, into the cabbage leaves. And that will begin the process of drying out the moisture. So that's why we do that. And I only do this for like a minute. Toss. Basically until you can really start to see. And th this stuff is, you know, I just harvested it today. So it's pretty wet. It's going to have plenty of liquid coming out. It's already, I don't know if you can see it, but... It's already just in these like couple seconds of swishing it. It's already starting to release its water, so. You get sauerkraut. I'm so excited. Okay, so we are done with hit number one. <laughs> So I'm going to continue to do the same thing with all of the heads of cabbage that we have. The outer leaves here, I'm setting these ones aside, I'm going to be making the lids to put on top of the sauerkraut so that I can put the weight on top of it and hold it under the brine so that none of the little floaties will come up. super late it's 11 o'clock at night and i gotta work tomorrow so this bowl is the second bowl i filled up this bowl first and then i moved on to this one so this one is probably ready to start actually drying up and i'm just going to show you the process on one of these and then i'm going to bring back when it's done <laughs> basically what we're going to do here see but at the bottom of this bowl here like see all that liquid pouring out there's like a puddle of water under here which is perfect it's exactly what we want it's gonna keep the, the sauerkraut nice and crunchy and it's gonna hold the brine basically so we're gonna do two things with this step and i have a canning funnel so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour uh you know however much into this jar here Okay, and then we're gonna stick, we're gonna tamp it down. Push and push and push it down. Really, really hard. Use a lot of force. Drawing out all of the liquid from in here. Okay. And then I forgot to put garlic in here, which is a big no-no to have that stuff. You have to have garlic. It's not negotiable. So the way that I'm going to resolve it, because I put it in, in the fermentation, is I'm just gonna put it in here like this, and just every, you know, every few inches of sauerkraut, I'll probably just add some. That way it'll get all mixed in there. I don't know if it's gonna work out great, but whatever. kind of a, a good idea but like I'm packing this stuff in here like I'm putting body weight into it like you really want to pack it in there as best as you can okay. so we're getting to the top of the jar here 
and we're gonna stop probably about two inches before we get to the top here. We don't wanna overfill it, we're not canning. Um, we wanna make sure that we leave plenty of room. Uh, first for the actual, the loose pieces that we're gonna put on top of it as kind of a lid, so to speak, to hold the pieces under the brine. And then also for the weight to go on top. And then we want that to even that to leave even more room so that it will leave room for expansion because as this ferments it's going to release it's going to create like carbon dioxide inside of here and so it, that is going to create bubbles inside of here and that's going to push the liquid up and so you want to make sure that you're leaving enough room in there for the expansion and contraction so that it won't expand out the jar you can see there is a lot of liquid in here and that's, I didn't add any water to it. You saw what I added. Take these pieces here that we had set aside and we are gonna cut out little dome pieces to put on top here. And I just think you can use like the ring to put on top of there. Just because I'm using the gallon size piece, like I'm doing it considerably, you know, a bit, quite a bit larger than you know, the, the opening here. I just wanna make sure that there's enough to go around it. We're gonna take these, right? And we're gonna push it down. We're gonna kind of let it fill up with the liquid just so you don't get this, you know, rush of liquid, you know, spilling out. And we're gonna push it down and we're gonna do our best to push it around on the edges here so that it will hold down um, the cabbage. Do this a couple of times for each one, right? There we go. Then we're gonna take our weight. I like to use these uh, mason top kits. Uh, this is the the uh, pickle pebble, and you got the pickle pipe. Put that on top here, and this pickle pipe has an opening here, and it will allow for the release of the carbon dioxide and but without allowing um outside stuff to come in here and that will create mold so i really like to use these i haven't had much issue with it i have found on uh like the online things on like facebook and stuff like that some of the people in th in the fermentation groups that they have issues with these but i haven't yet had an issue so i'm gonna keep using it until i do i haven't had an issue with it i really like it that's where i got this from was from the kit and so i just i enjoy them so i use them Okay, so uh, we're just gonna put the ring on here and we're gonna put this in a corner inside of some kind of a dish that we can collect any that's gonna pour out. Cause I mean, almost inevitably, some is gonna spill out and I don't want it to spill out on my floor. So uh, we're gonna put this inside of a dish and we're gonna put it in a fairly coolish kind of location. Like 65 is kind of what I find to be a little bit ideal, 60 to 65. Ferment it in a warm area. It will ferment very quickly and it will be a little bit mushier and it just won't have as complex of flavors. That's what I'm gonna do and I will bring you guys back here when we're all done and I'll show you how much we ended up getting and all the sorts of fun. So I'll see you then. It is time for us to go ahead and taste our ferment together. It has been quite a while. This we made together back in April, August. We made it in August. It is currently the end of June, January because I apparently don't know the calendar. So it's the end of January and we're ready to go ahead and give this one a taste test. As you can see, I have definitely been partaking in this. I just completely forgot to film the end of this until I went to edit this video and I was like, hey, wait a second. I forgot to share this with my friends. So we're gonna go ahead and taste test this together. It has been, we left this out for probably a month to a month and a half. Like I said, this is not a super in-depth tutorial on how to ferment. It is, and uh, not to mention the fact that even if it were, everybody likes to have a different time frame for their sauerkraut. I like to have mine actually for a very long time. And uh, that is one that I have going right over there. That one is coming up here pretty darn soon. That one has been on the counter for three months, probably three months. It's in a big giant sauerkraut fat. It's a little bit of a different recipe, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that one. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and taste this one together, and then I'm gonna give you some pretty darn good, exciting news. Okay, here we go. 
sauerkraut. Some good stuff. Nice and sour. It still has a good crunch to it. I don't know if you can hear that, but this stuff is delicious. I oftentimes usually will have this with like, I, I, I just have it on the side in a dish and I just eat it. I will mix it in with other food. In case you didn't know, pretty much all fermented foods have what they call umami. And that is a particular place in on your tongue with your taste buds. And it's just this thing, it's like an indescribable, complete flavor. Is That's the best way that I can describe it. It's like umami just completes the flavor of any dish that you have. And I personally feel like within reason, the longer you ferment, the longer, slower, and lower temperature that you ferment something, the more umami that it creates. So it's like, if you ferment things very quickly, you'll get a, you'll get a sour flavor, you'll get a ferment, you will get bacteria, all of those things, but it will go very quickly and then it won't create a, a it won't create like a really, what do you call it? A depth of flavor to it. Like it won't be a very deep umami flavor, but if you go low and slow, um, like the one that I got going on over there, it just it creates the most intense flavor that you can add to anything and it just makes everything just taste that much better. It is just, oh my gosh. If y'all don't like ferments, number one, I'm sure you probably do if you're watching this video, but if you don't love ferments, give it give it more of them a try. Try making them at home. And one thing I'm gonna show you real quick. If you guys are new to ferments and you're nervous, and you're just watching this video to try and get an idea of it, one thing that I'm going to suggest to you is trying out these. This is a pH test strip. I get them at my local brew shop, um, but you can get these on Amazon. I will link it down below along with the Mason Tops kit that I use uh, and anything else that I can think of. Maybe a couple of uh, beginner cook, beginner ferment books, things like that. I'll go ahead and link those down below for you guys so you can have some resources if you're newer to this. But so all you do is you take this test strip. You can see? It's got this nice little blue blue color to it, okay? Then you can take it and dip it in your ferment, right? Dip it in there for a second. And then you're gonna be able to see, it's gonna change flavor. It was blue, now it's kind of like a green color. So you can see here, this one is, this one is the unused strip. This is the new strip, or the <laughs> this is the used strip. So you can see, if you compare it on here, it's not gonna be an exact color match. It's, it's definitely a range. So you can see, I would guess it's probably like right here. It's probably right about where it's at. But it is definitely below a 4.0 pH. And the way that you can get yourself a little bit more comfortable with fermenting is that you can use these test strips and as soon as it gets below a 4.0 pH, that is beyond the point that botulism can survive. And honestly, with fermenting, you really don't have to worry about botulism. I know a lot of people with, with who are newer to ferments are pretty concerned with botulism. It's really not a worry with, with fermenting. If you are even remotely um, safe and cautious with it, you're not gonna have a problem with it. The main thing that you would might have an issue with if you try to do any kind of oil um, like for like uh, preserving an oil, like preserving garlic in, in olive oil, things like that. That's the main place that you need to worry about it. So now that we've got that out of the way, I'm gonna leave all of those links down below so that you guys can have a better introduction for anybody who might be new and also for anybody who just might be curious. I am not new, but I really enjoy having these test strips. It's just kind of interesting and I'm very curious how long sometimes it takes. Sometimes I'll just dip it in there every day because I'm just curious how long it takes. Uh, to get it under uh, the 4.0 pH. And it's different every time. So I can't tell you, hey, it takes four days or hey, it takes seven days. I want to go ahead and let you guys know about something really exciting that's coming up. Uh, today is the 24th. You're gonna see this on the 25th. And coming up next month, we are gonna be, we're doing a collaboration with a bunch of different channels for fermented February. 
I know, right? Okay, so every day in the month of February, with the exception of the last day, uh, there's going to be a channel that is going to do a fermenting recipe. We have people from uh, smaller channels to larger channels. We have people from uh, who have never fermented before, some intermediate, some people who have fermented quite a bit, and everybody's going to come up with their own um, their own video on ferments that they just really want to try. It's going to be a combination of their own recipes, recipes they've found, uh, the whole gambit of everything for all different types of ferments. Like it's going to be pretty darn exciting. So I wanted to go ahead and let you know in alphabetical order, we have a farm girl in the making, a good life farm, acre homestead, bacon grease goddess, becoming a farm girl, bumblebee apothecary, uh, fermented homestead, freedom homestead, green witch homestead, hidden oaks homestead, hood homestead, in case you didn't notice the homestead uh, um, theme here, uh, Morris Patch of Heaven, North Star Prep Stetter, Rowan Co. Farms, Sage and Stone Homestead, Stivers Homestead, That 1870s Homestead, and Mulberry Branch Farm. If you guys are into ferments, February is your month. It's going to be a really exciting month. And we have some channels are doing one video, some channels are doing two videos. So I'm pretty darn excited. We're gonna, we have a whole bunch of ferments, a whole diff, bunch of different types of ferments. And throughout the month, I'm also on my channel, even on the days that are not like my fermented February days, I'm gonna be trying to give you guys a bunch more fermenting recipes. So February is the month to be if you are interested in ferments. So make sure that if you guys are interested in ferments, that you guys are watching all of the videos in the collaboration and commenting on each of them down below. At the end of the month on the 28th, I'm going to be doing a live stream and we're going to be giving away a regular mouth kit, kit and a wide mouth kit. I'm going to be giving away two kits to two different people and we might even be throwing in a few extra surprises by the end. We'll see how things go throughout the month, but make sure that you guys are stay tuned. Make sure you guys spread the word. Um, share with everybody that you know this is a new collaboration, so we're really trying to get, get it off the ground and get um, just really get fermenting out there and get people interested in it and get people excited about it. So make sure that you help us with that and spread the word and tell everybody that you know that loves the fermenting. So if you guys are new to this channel, make sure that you click this little ball right here. That is a subscription link. Make sure you check that one out. And then also make sure you check out this video here. This is one that YouTube says that you are going to like. This video here is a delicious fermentation recipe. And then up here is my fermenting playlist. Make sure you check that one out for all the different ferments that I've done since the beginning of the YouTubes. So make sure you give this video a thumbs up and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.